police report was a fabrication. We're going to break it down with a video forensics experts, a expert. And just when you thought it was safe to look at the Republican Party, they're going to prove why they are just the party that defends the rich. I would think you would want to say to the oil companies, what obstacles are there to you making more money and hiring more people? Instead, they say, no, we must punish them. And the conservatives go after the youth vote. We're going to show you their epic fail. The conservative team. Finally, a publication for kids who are sick of doing their own thing and just want to conform to conservative ideals. And in the famous words of Jake Uger, it's go time! Welcome to the Young Turks. You know, we've been covering the Trayvon Martin shooting case, I think, longer and with greater diligence than anybody else on television. We're going to continue doing it today. We've taken a look now, a very close look, at the surve video surveillance uh, tapes taken from the Sanford Police Department. And let's look at that again right now. Let's see this videotape. You see here, this is Zimmerman getting out of the car on February 26th, the night of the shooting, walking out. This is a man, remember, that has said that he is, was beaten up, bloodied, broken nose. You see a police officer actually looking at his head there, which means, yes, maybe something was there. But this is not someone who is just broken down, beaten up, cannot move. There are no grass stains. There's no soil on his. Uh, on his body. This is not somebody as his defense, when, when we say his defense, it means his father and people speaking on his behalf. His friend, his quote unquote friend Joe Oliver has said that he is somebody who was beaten up. This does not look like someone who's beaten up as he's walking there. You see through the police station, going to what he thought was probably his arrest, what we think should have been his arrest, but no, he would have been released a little bit later. And again, this is the kind of, uh, this is the kind of video that makes you think, well, wait a second, if this guy is telling this story and this is his defense, how in the world can we think that this is somebody who's not guilty? Because this is not a beaten man, again, this is not someone who's down on the ground struggling and fighting. But you did see uh, a little bit of a police sort of hesitate and look at the back of his head. So. Uh, MSNBC has done a slowed down version of that video where you can see a little bit of uh, what's behind his head. And if you look very closely at the video we're going to show you now, you're going to see that, yes, there's a, maybe a little bit of a cut. But this is not someone who is bleeding profusely. You didn't see a, uh, a broken nose. Let's look at this video. This is MSNBC's enhanced uh, coverage. Within the past hour, NBC News has also zoomed in on the video to get a better view of whether Zimmerman has the injuries that he and his attorney have described. Now, his attorney has said Trayvon Martin broke Zimmerman's nose. A newspaper is also reporting Martin repeatedly sm smashed Zimmerman's head into the pavement. Martin's family says the video proves their son did not attack George Zimmerman because, according to them, they don't see any injuries. Yeah, you don't see injuries. Yes, we see a mark. We do see a police officer pause. But you don't see any of the kind of injuries that would mean that this person needed to pull out a gun and shoot Trayvon Martin. Benjamin Crump, the lawyer for Trayvon Martin and the Martin family, for the Martin family, uh, had something to say about that as well. When you look at that video with your eyes and you listen to the 911 tapes that we had to sue for, everybody in America now sees that that police report was a fabrication. Uh, George Zimmerman doesn't exhibit a broken nose. He doesn't exhibit blood on the back of his head. He doesn't exhibit his clothes messed up. So America can judge for themselves. And Robert Zimmerman, you, li you listen to Benjamin Crump there saying exactly what we think. You look at that video and you don't see anything that means that this is somebody who was, uh, you know, beaten up and uh, afraid for his life. And Robert Zimmerman, George Zimmerman's father, Robert Zimmerman, it should be noted, is a former judge. And, Robert Zimmer and George Zimmerman's mother is a former court clerk. Uh, they actually, uh, what, what are they going to say? They're going to say, oh, yeah, this is what my son said. This is what happened. I'm a judge. He, he can look at it in the, from the point of view of a judge. And he can talk about it from the point of view of a father. But he says that uh, to Fox uh, News in Orlando, Fox 35, he says a totally different story. Let's listen to what uh, Robert Zimmerman says when asked about George Zimmerman. After nearly a minute of being beaten, uh, George was trying to get his head off the concrete, trying to move uh, with Trayvon on him into the grass. Uh, in doing so, his firearm was shown. 
Trayvon Martin said something to the effect of you're going to die now or you're going to die tonight, something to that effect. He continued to beat George and at some point George pulled his pistol and did, did what he did. Again, now, you have uh, Robert Zimmerman talking about his son. Robert Zimmerman is a judge. He's been in courtrooms all, all his life. Uh, he knows how to talk about this issue, and is a father who can blame him. He's going to talk about it in that way. He was obscured, of course, for, for fear of threats on his life, uh, and, and we understand that. But, you know, I'm joined now by two gentlemen who are going to help us uh, take this apart. Uh, we have uh, Tom Mesereau. Tom is a criminal defense attorney, well-known for having defended uh, Robert Blake and Michael Jackson in 2005. And David Notowitz. David is a video forensics expert. Tom, I'm going to start with you. When you see this kind of a video, as somebody you know who has defended some you know major criminals and and probably some minor ones, when you see something like alleged, this, alleged criminals, alleged criminals. That's right. Yeah, yeah, that's a good point. Alleged criminals. I'm clearly not a lawyer. Uh, what do you what do you glean from his demeanor when you see Zimmerman getting out of the car? Well, when you first look at the tape without any enhancement or any slow motion uh, or any magnification, <clears throat> you don't see much evidence of injury at all. You don't see anything on his head or face. You don't see any blood on his shirt. You don't see blood on the, any police officer's shirt. And at first blush, this tape does not seem to help the defense of Mr. Zimmerman at all. Uh, that's interesting because you do see a cut, but you're saying that it doesn't help his defense. Because well, of, I you mean, you see what could be a cut. You see what could be a cut. Uh, you don't see a cut that you would automatically assume uh, reflects enough violence to justify deadly force, to take a, a gun and shoot a young person dead. You don't see that at all. Uh, you know, David Notowitz, you've brought to us a new tape, and I want you to tell us about what this tape is and what, what it shows. We're going to look at it. We're going to look at it right now on the screen. Yes, uh, but they were showing it just now. Um, this is footage I just saw off of YouTube literally t uh, 15 minutes ago, and it was newly updated and uploaded by the city, of, the city there, and uh, it shows in much greater detail the entrance as he's being escorted, Mr. Zimmerman, into the police station. Um, Often what happens in these cases is people are jumping to conclusions way before we can really analyze all the evidence. And so what we're seeing is the first stuff that was uploaded was low resolution, was, you know, if you study it, you can't see the details necessarily that you need to see. Right, this is the first tape now that we already Correct. saw that, that, that Sanford released yesterday. Correct, and it looks to me like it was shot actually with another video camera off a computer screen. It wasn't the original footage. So now I found this other footage that was just uploaded literally a few minutes ago, and uh, it shows in much greater detail. This is still the older footage. What it's, is it showing us in greater detail, though? What, what are well, we Well, we're hoping to see, you know, as any forensic expert would do, they would analyze very carefully, frame by frame, for example, the back of his head to see if he's telling the truth or to see if we can see any scars. And this is the footage now here. You see it in the back of his head. Maybe he has an injury there that we didn't notice before. Okay, so Tom Mesereau, uh, you've, again, spent a tremendous amount of time in courtrooms and you've looked at a lot of video. Does the demeanor of the police officer looking at the back of the head, does that make you give, does that give you pause and say, okay, he's looking at the back of Zimmerman's head because there's something off with it. He wouldn't be looking if there weren't. Well, the police officers are, are used to so many arrests, so many uh, violent situations, so many bloody situations. I don't look for the demeanor of a police officer to tell me very much in a situation of an arrest or, or detaining someone. What I think is important here is who was the aggressor? Uh, you hear the 911 operator telling Zimmerman back off. Apparently he did not back off. And if he didn't back off and if he approached this young boy with a gun, maybe the young boy was trying to defend his life against Zimmerman. Um, the problem here is the disproportionate use of force because the most disproportionate use of force in a situation like this is deadly force. Uh, I see nothing on Zimmerman that explains why he had to take a gun and shoot a young man to death. Yeah, and then that's the takeaway from looking at these videos. I mean, you, you, you've heard what Zimmerman and Zimmerman supporters have been saying now for, for a, a few weeks at least, and, and this does not refute any of that. I mean, this refutes all of that. It does not support any of that. David, quickly, before, before we let you guys go, when you look at, uh, at video, and are, are you looking at it generally um, to see how the people around him react or how his, you know, what, what he's being like? When, when you see George Zimmerman there, aside from the injuries, aside from enhancing the video, do you look at what the person, how they're behaving? 
It depends on the case and what people have asked me to do. But uh, in this case, when we're seeing him get out of the police car and walking to be escorted, he, the police officers do not look scared of him in any way. In fact, their backs are turned for a long time. That's something that I noticed. They're not worried about him doing anything to them. And they're worried about his back of his head. I saw them brush his, his back of his coat, and it ends up being wet. And the police officer rubs his, his uh, pants, showing that he was obviously in some kind of a situation on the ground, laying on the ground. Yeah, that's interesting, because people said that, and you know, I'm just looking at it, it doesn't look wet, but that's the kind of thing. I'm not yeah. a video forensics expert. So that's a That's detail. why you come into the courtroom. You're looking at it over and over again, sometimes for weeks at a time, to discover these little bitty details that might support or not support right. um, different people's takes on the case. So Tom, is he hired? Yes. Okay, good. We'll, we'll, we'll consider him for he, sure. He's a keeper. <laughs> Tom Mesereau, David Nodowitz, thanks so much for being with us.